So social media is blazing right now because the reports are coming down about this Oklahoma Sooner team going into 2024. And the biggest conversation piece is that defense, though. So we got to talk about that. Let's talk about some of the key players on there, as well as a couple of offensive guys that have jumped off the screen that we really did not cover you know, a couple weeks ago when we talked about the practice. Before we do that, welcome to Unfair Sports. I'm your host, Jay. Thank you for pulling up to the channel. Let's dive right into this because I'm excited about what 2024 looks like and the spring practices are providing us more and more details of what that looks like even more, right? First and foremost, we're going to start on the defensive side of the ball and then highlight some offensive guys. But defensively, I'm going to tell you, the defensive line, Looks a lot better than expected in this 24K class. Jane Jackson, David Stone, they've been getting high praise from the players. I've been seeing this in some interviews. You've got them talking about Jane Jackson could work his way up into some game time, right? I remember when Jaden Jackson was initially a recruit and people were questioning Oklahoma getting him. We got him from the jaws of Texas because Texas actually didn't want him. And he decided to go to Oklahoma. And when I pointed out that, hey, man, He's probably way underrated than what he should be. Dude started shooting up all the rankings, finished up as a four-star across the board. And yeah, he's already showing out in practice. He's got the size. He's like 296 today. The anticipation is he'll be over 300 in the closer to 310 range by the time the fall hits, which means that Schmitty summer workout program is going to have that dude stout. But the thing is, is his technique and his size are huge for what Oklahoma's trying to do defensively. Like, that zero, that nose tackle, that zero technique, he's a dude that can eat up double teams and cause them problems, right? If you got two 300s pushing a one 300, you're supposed to be able to cause problems there. But no, he's forcing people out of his way. So Jane Jackson's probably the biggest one on the defensive side that y'all gonna have to understand. He gonna play. And David Stone, the big thing that I've been seeing on a few different reports is he just got to get his technique down because he already looks the part. And we've seen in the videos and him going up against some of his counterparts in practice that he looks the part of a player that, yeah, it's pretty darn good, right? He already looks like a defensive lineman at the collegiate level. He Walks in from high school with that. So, since that he's going to make some run. And so, with Dejon Terry being your lone 300 pounder, having a Jaden Jackson with a David Stone so young, ready to contribute, it's huge. Like, it feels like once they get up to speed fully, they're going to see some run. But other guys is also showing out too. You're seeing some Grayson Halton. Some G Baby is supposedly looking like he's ready to go ahead and step into that three technique and be something next to Terry. We just need to get a couple more dudes in 310 range. That way we can make sure that these double teams are being ate up. We can truly attack or force teams to at least double team you. Now, granted, we don't get those guys and these guys are skilled enough to force double teams. can be the same effect, but supposedly the run defense is going to be stupid. And the pass rush is going to definitely improve, especially as those edges and jacks are going to be out there being dumb in that Zach Alley offense. Now, offensively, the offensive line, the way these reports are coming down, they just got to gel. It's like they have the guys that look the part, but because there's so much newness there, they got the cohesion isn't fully there, but they weren't bad. They just weren't good, right? But it's more so communication and working together. Funny thing is, is it makes me think about how great this is for the offense because I'm going to keep it a buck. I think this is probably one of the two toughest defenses our offense is going to see this season, period. In practice and then someone in the SEC. I just don't know who defensively is going to be a problem but I'm telling you this, this Oklahoma defense will be top three defense we'll see this season easily. That's a plus because iron sharpens iron was leads us over to two positions that have jumped out on the offensive side that we didn't talk a lot about here. I've been waiting to see if, you know, somebody come down the line with it and they did first off tight end, right? When I was talking about spring practice, I didn't really talk much about the tight ends, but guess what? Tight ends are looking like, 
That Bauer Sharp kid, the transfer from Southeast Louisiana, the one that y'all was trying to say, oh man, he, you know, he, he don't sound like he's gonna be that good. Um, all of our tight ends are roughly two forty five plus. All of them, Jake Roberts, uh, Bauer Sharp, Devon Mitchell. Your three keys is gonna be playing playing a lot. McIntyre is getting up there in size. He'll be he's gonna be you know nice and weighty. Hampton Fay. You've also got. Caden Helms, who's looking like he's getting healthy and supposedly he's going through stuff. But the key thing is Bauer Shop, Devon Mitchell, and Hampton Fay sound like those three are going to be your biggest problems. And even Josh Fanuel is looking like he's he's got to get his technique down. He's an athlete. Um, the key thing is the ability to block. But you got a whole bunch of tight ends in the 350 range. I mean, 250 range. And they're all able to compete now. You've got a few tight ends in the 245 to 250 range out there balling. That's something y'all should be excited about because, I mean, tight end play, unfortunately, last year wasn't much. We dealt with a lot of injuries. It appears that we're a lot more healthy in comparison to before. And, heck, Caden Helms is sitting there at 240, and he's getting healthy. That I mean, 250, he... Uh... He could be a threat, especially because he's athletic and he's strong enough to do it. We just got to make sure that knee's good. As long as that knee's good, we're fine. But Bauer Sharp is 6'4", 250. He looks the part and he plays the part. It's what everybody's been reporting. I've been, I just read an article in 247 about him. You got to go check it out. Tom Green, good old Tom Verde, did good. Talking about Bauer and how Bauer was considered in Oklahoma, but was looking other places too. But, you know, came to visit and was like, nah, this is home. He sees the opportunity to play. And honestly... He looked around. He was like, yep, see some marks. I'm going to go ahead and take them. He may have taken that starting spot between him and then Jake Roberts, if I'm correct, has still got to get a little bit more healthy, but he's over 250. So you got two guys over 6'4", 250 with Devon Mitchell, who's also 6'4", 250. I'm telling you, man, I don't think that, um, I don't think that tight end is going to be a problem this coming season, especially with Bauer and Hampton, both being former quarterbacks. Yeah, all you have to do is get Faye up in size and it looks like he's at that point where in the 240 range, he's ready to play. So tight end's big. Last one is going to be whew, wide receiver room. Emmett Jones needs a raise. Yeah, he said Deion Burke's out there cooking everybody. So he's going to probably go out there and go for 100 catches this season. I anticipate a very heavy pass offense, but at the same time, it's probably going to be a 45, 55-45 split. Between pass and run, I think we're going to run more, but we're going to get a lot of passing yards. We've got a lot more vertical threats now, right? I mean, Jackson Arnold can launch it. You've got Brendan Thompson, who's a fast dude. You've got Jaquez Petaway, who's making plays, and he's a fast dude. Throwing out there Nick Anderson, Jane Gibson, who's been doing it. Farouk, who's going to redeem himself this coming season. You've got Andrew Anthony, who, when I saw the pictures of him, he's not wearing a knee brace. But I'm still hoping, I'm still waiting for them to, to, to for us to see if he actually plays in the fall. I'm sensing that we may not see him until mid to late season, or they may redshirt him and let him rest it up. And then once Farouk is out, bring him back in, and heck, Deion Burks could potentially end up going pro because he has an outstanding season. But you don't want to rush him back because you have no reason to. The room is so stacked with young talent that him being a veteran presence ain't going to do nothing but help the young guys grow up. And then, of course, Ivan Carrion. We talked about him in another video, but Carrion is going to be stupid good. But Deion Burks is another player that's just absurdly talented. So Deion Burks between him and the tight end room, all improving. The offensive line is going to get its cohesion. I'm not concerned about that. But I think the bigger thing is here is that defense is going to look like what it used to look like in the 2000s when Brent Venables used to give Kevin Wilson hell. Like there was an article that came out when we played Tulsa and Kevin Wilson talked about how when he was coaching Sam Bradford, you know, Heisman Trophy winning Sam Bradford, that his offenses could not move on Brent Venable's defense because they just was that good. That was a record-setting offense that Sam Bradford was commanding. And Jackson Arnold has a really good chance to do the same, but the best part about that is, is that for Jackson Arnold, this will be probably the toughest defense he's going to see if not a top three defense, he's going to see this coming season. And if that's the case, iron sharpening iron, I anticipate this offense to be stupid good. So, Seth Latrell's got his work to do. Hop in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Who 
do you want to know about? What player are you curious the most about? I'll try to answer some co- uh, questions, some of the comments myself, or we'll drop a video and talk through some of the people that y'all, y'all mentioned in there. You made it this far. Thank you. If you like the content, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Love for y'all to join us, baby. So we'll dive into some more stuff from the practices as they go along. I'm hearing a running back is out there showing out. Um, I've got a, I got a text about the safety room and whew, I cannot wait to talk more about them. We'll do that in a shorter video a little bit later, but um, check out some of the other content. I actually got the spring game listed, so check it out. We'll talk soon. Peace.